Hello. It's the middle of the summer season. It's all change in the garden. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. I really like this time of year. I've started harvesting some crops so the uh, pantry and the freezer is starting to fill up. And as I'm harvesting one crop, to making space for the next ones to go in. It's that successional planting, one crop after another, that helps the garden become so productive. This year I've really focused on having um, plants ready to go into the ground as soon as there's some space. So in here uh, were some lettuces that have gone over. Uh, I'd harvested most of them and the last three uh, just ran to seed. And so uh, I'm going to uh, pop some young beetroot into here. Oh, I have to be a bit careful making holes because, <laughs> because there are a lot of voles in this garden uh, and they make tunnels under all of the beds. And the other thing I've done, uh, which I'm really pleased with, uh, it's worked uh, better than I had anticipated, uh, is to get some of that successional uh, planting done while the previous crop was still in the ground. Over in the area that I call the market garden, uh, the onion rows uh, have been in. But a few weeks ago, uh, when they were ready, I interplanted them with sweet corn. So the sweet corn was growing in between the rows of onions and I also put in uh, some squashes. So when I harvested all the onions yesterday, the sweet corn was already well established and uh, raring to go and so were the squashes. Last week I planted a few seed potatoes in this bed and I thought I'd show you uh, that they are already uh, coming through really nicely. These are looking like strong healthy shoots. And so I'm looking forward uh, to harvesting these in about three months' time. In this bed, I had a second sowing of broad beans, uh, that's fava beans, which I've just taken out, but not because I was harvesting them, uh, because they had actually failed. They had failed to thrive uh, in this bed and were still only a few inches high, um, had an awful lot uh, of black fly on them that we have got plenty of ladybirds here and I've seen some ladybird larvae as well so the ladybirds had come to attack the black fly but uh, the broad beans just weren't doing anything and I would rather use the space uh, more productively and get in a few more lettuces in this end than for those beans to struggle on and then really not give me a very good harvest. So I'm getting in uh, some baby lettuce that I sowed in June. I'm going to plant them in the spaces between these lettuces. These are little gem and it won't be very long before I'm lifting these. They're just beginning to get a heart. I don't need them uh, to heart up too much because otherwise uh, they just bolt and go to seed here. Uh, so I know that I need to uh, harvest them when they're quite small. So I'll get these lettuces in uh, to get themselves established. The ducks are very interested in what I'm doing today. And I have to be careful how I plant these because <laughs> To remind myself every time that they actually grow to about uh, 12 inches wide uh, and not just a few inches like the little gem lettuces. I've been asked a couple of times in the last week uh, about the ducks and do I let them free range uh, and wander through the veg garden and do they eat the produce. So yes I do let them into the vegetable garden but only during uh, late autumn and winter and the early spring and this year I shut them out of the vegetable garden at the beginning of April and I shut them out of the food forest at the beginning of May and they'll be allowed back into the food forest um, in a couple of weeks time when I finished harvesting uh, the currants and blueberries that are in there uh, because <laughs> if I didn't shut them out uh, they would be feasting on blueberries and black currants. We wouldn't get very many of them. 
But as soon as those are over, they'll be allowed back into the food forest. They really do a good job at keeping down the slugs and snails. And then in autumn, uh, they'll be allowed back in here and I will net uh, any beds that I don't want the ducks to access. Here's the strawberry bed that for the last three years uh, I've been saying I will lift the strawberries once they're finished uh, and use this bed for something else. Well, the time has finally come uh, when Mr J and I are actually going to uh, lift these strawberry plants and I'm not going to save them. There are, oh, <laughs> still a few strawberries uh, to pick. And we're not going to save any of these old plants. Uh, in the pathway over there, there are some runners uh, that they put out last year. And I will transplant those runners to a new uh, place. And indeed, uh, these new runners here. And you can do that in a couple of ways. Uh, you can, while the runners are still attached to the plant, you can fill a plant pot with some soil and put your uh, little baby plant into it and um, let that grow on for a year and then... Uh, cut the runner off but what I do is take these young plants and just transplant them straight into a new bed we'll come back and hopefully this bed will be transformed a couple of weeks ago uh, Mr J and I did a Q&A and live chat over on Patreon didn't we oh yes we did yes. and we had such a good time <laughs> we did have a good time didn't we? and you suggested he suggested I you did it. I did it's my fault <laughs> He suggested that we uh, do that on a regular basis. So if you'd like to join us for those, please head on over to Patreon. Uh, I'll leave a link on the screen and in the video description. Be really nice to see you there. Yeah, absolutely. There's something really satisfying uh, about seeing cabbage white butterflies flitting around the garden, but not being able to access those cabbages. But because I want to support the butterfly population uh, overall, I plant some brassicas out in the open. And these are Brussels sprouts, uh, but there's also some kale and some cabbages. And I can see uh, on the back of this leaf, there are indeed uh, some little eggs. So uh, a butterfly has found these, or perhaps a moth. Um, and they can munch away on these quite happily. And the reason I want to support the population is actually those butterflies are food for other animals, anything from hedgehogs uh, to birds. Just to prove a point, <laughs> here comes the butterfly and uh, it is laying eggs. I'm really pleased with how strong and healthy these corn plants are looking. It's already hard to imagine uh, how full this area was uh, with onions just two days ago. Mr J uh, has been bringing out some of the used poultry bedding uh, that's been stacked for quite some time. Uh, so this was uh, from the stable where the chickens were and I shut them out of the front half of the stable uh, about six to eight months ago. So this has been uh, sitting nicely since then. It could probably do uh, with a bit longer, but uh, here it is, it's being used. I'm using this as a mulch uh, to suppress the weeds. But the other thing I want to plant in here uh, is some flowers. So I will be uh, just making a small hole uh, through the mulch and planting uh, down into the ground. And what I've got is a whole load that a veritable host of borage plants. We've got seedlings of both blue and white borage, uh, blue from the main vegetable garden and the white borage uh, from this bed uh, where it was growing last year and we've got dozens of seedlings. There we are, uh, it's about, uh, most of it is about six inches high, this taller leaf is a bit more. I'm going to do the rest of them this evening uh, when the sun isn't so bright so they have less likelihood of wilting so I'll put lots of borage in here and I'm also going to put uh, some sweet allison I bought this uh, it was advertised quite cheaply uh, 
on a local group, uh, a gardening group on Facebook. And so uh, I will be putting some of those in and I want uh, the flowers in here to help support the bee population uh, because bees absolutely love uh, borage flowers uh, and also the very sweet uh, honey scenting uh, flowers of the sweet alisum. So we're now heading over to that old strawberry bed to get all of the strawberries out of there and create a new rose bed. And so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you'll join me again next time. Mm -hmm.